Germany and the Nazi party in the early 1930s had not yet shown the world what the horrors they would unleash on the world and humanity. But when Hitler came to power in 1933, things changed, and changed rapidly. In Geneva in 1933, delegates from across the world met at the League of Nations Disarmament Conference. Germany had urgent demands to make there, mainly about their army and navy, which had been severely restricted by the Treaty of Versailles. Germany demanded that other countries have their armed forces reduced to the same levels, and if they refused to do so, then Germany themselves would begin to rearm. France in particular argued strongly and insisted that a renewal of German military power would endanger France's security. The arguments and counter-arguments led to no one's great surprise, a deadlock. The conference occurred just days after Adolf Hitler had come to power as Chancellor of Germany, and the German delegation was determined to rearm, reject all proposals, and leave the League of Nations. The leader of the German delegates was one Joseph Goebbels. Goebbels was Minister of Propaganda for the Nazi Party. His main objectives were to keep a positive public image for the party and its leaders, to control and censor media, newspaper, radio, cinema, the arts and literature. His department also had a responsibility for the broadcasting of racial supremacy, stressing gender roles, as well as assisting the Nazi party in its ever-increasing war against the Jews. Early images of Goebbels at the conference show him as light-hearted, cheerful and in a carefree mood. Several snaps have been taken of Goebbels and the other delegates, and nothing seemed amiss. Until he was photographed by Alfred Eisenstadt, who worked for Life magazine. It is unknown how Goebbels knew that Eisenstadt was a Jew, but it is all too clear the hatred he felt for the man. The look he was captured with goes further than just being annoyed at being photographed. His deep scowl, tense posture and knuckles gripping the arms of the chair all speak of a deep revulsion. Eisenstadt himself was certain that Goebbels knew he was a Jew, as he recorded years later. I found him sitting alone at a folding table on the lawn of the hotel. I photographed him from a distance without him being aware of it. As documentary reportage, the picture may have some value. It suggests his aloofness. Later I found him at the same table, surrounded by aides and bodyguards. Goebbels seemed so small, while his bodyguards were huge. I walked up close and photographed Goebbels. It was horrible. He looked up at me with an expression full of hate. The result, however, was a much stronger photograph. There is no substitute for close personal contact and involvement with a subject, no matter how unpleasant it may be. He looked at me with hateful eyes and waited for me to wither. But I didn't. If I have a camera in my hand, I don't know fear. A quote from Joseph Goebbels' diary shows his hatred towards the Jews. The Jews are now being deported to the East, a fairly barbaric procedure. Not to be described in any greater detail is being used here, and not much more remains of the Jews themselves. In general, it can probably be established that 60% of them must be liquidated, while only 40% can be put to work. A judgment is being carried out on the Jews which is barbaric, but fully deserved. <laughs>